Welcome back to another advanced game maker studio tutorial and this time we're gonna do a very quick system how you can do critical damage and how you can display that on your screen. So this is a request from one of my patrons so here you go buddy. If you want to know that, how to do that in Game Maker Studio, stay tuned. This is One Up Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every day a video and share my stuff if you can. So let's get right into the good stuff. So basically what you're just seeing on the screen is this guy throwing some sacks and once they hit an enemy then there will be a damage roll between a minimal and a maximum value and then it will check if it is a crit because there's a crit chance. So how can we set it up? Let's go and kill that thing. So basically I have in my room a controller and that controller is just having some values. Of course you can do that inside the player but let's say for example you're having lives and while your player is being reset then it is a common practice to do your critical chance and variables which are outside and should be always there changed. For example, you have a level up, then maybe your their values will change. Then it makes sense to do that in an external thing which is all the time there and not being destroyed. So very, very easy setup. I have a damage range between a minimal value and a maximum value. So between 20 and 60. And then as a second part, I have a critical chance, which is 40. So basically I'm just going between zero and 100. So um, if it's above a specific threshold, then it will be critical. And then the damage critical is basically just the multiplication of the result of these two guys. This is basically it. We don't need to come back to this controller because this is just storing some information which we're gonna get. Of course, there's more stuff in there, the player and so on. But here, I just go in and do one thing. I have an, well, a collision with the enemy parent. And then I'm gonna do a few things. And here, uh, let's kill that. So basically what we are having here is just for once um, the hit with the, with the enemy. And then of course, we destroy ourselves. So first of all, we need to do a roll, which we can do with a, a random variable. So first of all, we just say and store our first result of our damage in our damage final variable. So I just say random range. Of course, you can go for I random range, but I think in the end, I will round out the number, so this is not so important at the start. Uh, random range, here we go. And then we take uh, the damage, which we set up in our object controller, and take that as a minimal value. And then, once again, to close this guy, we take the maximum value. So basically, in this first variable, we just store a value between 20, I hope it was 20, and, and 60. So here we will get a first damage number and then we are checking, hey, are we crit for that? I just create a second temporary variable. Of course you can do that with regular variables, but I think um, var is good enough because once you use those variables, they are gonna get after one step, they're just being discarded and well, they just have uh, one um, well, use they're just being used in one scene, so in one step, and then there's no need for them. So that's why you can go with var as a temporal variable. And here, I do a little trick, and I and this I need to explain a little bit. Then I'm having a third variable. So this is first of all the first damage result, so a number. Here I'm just saying. First of all, we are not critical, but that is a kind of a flip, which we are uh, a switch, which we are just flipping if we are, if we are not. And then we are saying, all right, let's make a roll if, so basically just imagine it being like dice rolls or something like that. And then we are checking for 
critical chance, which are called crit chance. Then I go for I random chance, of course, you can again do a random range or I random. The differences between here is just I take all the numbers, so this could be 2.56 or whatever, or 20.617 or whatever, but this I, well, it's a smaller number. And here I just go between two values again, which is our crit chance starting from zero, so zero plus our critical chance, and then 100 plus our critical chance. Why do I do that? Because this is a determining factor for me to check out one thing if it is critical. So if I'm saying our crit chance is bigger than 100. So here, for example, without those values, without the additional critical chance, which is stored in our controller, this would never be applied. But here we are above 100. Then what do we do? Well, we flip our switch, which is saying I critical is true because we are critical, true, no, this is how you write it. And then, of course, we need to take our damage and change it a little bit. We just multiply it with the value which I called uh, damage critical. So basically, this is 240% or 2.4. So we multiply it, of course, our Get stored in our controller and bam, we are done. So basically, we just have first number, checking, doing an empty variable, which is I crit. Then we do a critical chance, then checking if the critical chance is, well, above 100. Flip to true, and then we do our final uh, damage number. And here we could already stop because this is how you do the roll and here you have some numbers but of course maybe you want to have it visually represented and therefore I have used my own um, asset and here you can if you are well uh, if you are a patron then you will recognize that thing here I just say uh, first of all I have a damage variable which is a pass in thing so I just pass in the final damage number of course it needs to be a round number. My system doesn't allow round, um, not round numbers. So basically, I round it out. Bam. Then I'm checking: Are you, well, are you crit? If not, display it in light orange with a smaller size. And if you are crit, then display it um, in a light red, as you, which you have seen. And then, of course, a bigger size. And then, of course, then I have some other options. Then I have the anthem style, so it just goes. To the top right i have different styles there you can check that out if you are a patron because i built and build it with lots of modularities but for example if you don't want or are you not a patron then i had a I have a viz uh, well i have a video which is displaying and showing you how you can do your own damage number this is just a convenient way how to do that and then fade out blah 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 and let's start it again and here you go as you can see, works perfectly. And well, this is basically it. Very, very easy thing. It's just rolling and making that stuff easy to use. So hopefully that was of use to you. Have a good one. One up indeed.